It's not just you. Starting a game project can feel like punishment. You ever started a game project and maybe start it in Visual Studio, maybe start in an engine, whatever it is, but it just takes you forever to get set up. Fighting things, you got dependency, hell, you have to configure your IDE, and there's all these things going wrong. You're spending days just to get to Hello Triangle, and that really sucks. So what do we actually want when we sit down and we program a game? We want to open a file, we want to type some code, and then we want to run it. That's it. Is that too much to ask? Yeah, well, apparently it is. For a lot of setups, that is too much to ask. Why does every language make this harder than it needs to be? Either you spend hours configuring and tinkering to get builds working, compiling libraries to make sure they have the same flags and all that kind of stuff, or you give up all the control and you use an engine like Unity or Godot or whatever. Now, I'm assuming that if you're watching my channel, you're probably not in the second camp there, and you want to actually program stuff from scratch. So how can we do that? Well, luckily there is the GOAT, Odin. It's a batteries included language. It's a joy to write and read, and it's got powerful uh, features and it's low level as well. So what does it mean that it's batteries included? Well, why don't we have a look? All right, I'm gonna show you how to get set up with Odin, everything in just a few minutes. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go to odinlang.org. You're gonna Scroll down here and have a look at download. Click that button. And then we're going to go down here to latest release. Click that. It's going to take us over to GitHub. And if we scroll down here, there's a bunch of different zip files for different operating systems. Now I'm on Windows, so I'm going to choose that. Uh, however, I have already downloaded it. So let me just open that here. And this is what it looks like. So as you can see, in this folder, it's already got odin.exe. So it's already compiled for us. So we don't have to do anything else except we do have to put this somewhere on the path. So if you don't know what the path is, it's a place, well, it could be many places that when you type an executable, your computer will look there, or your operating system will look there to find the executable. So I'll just quickly show you how to do that. So you want to type in Windows, then type in path, and you should get this uh, edit environment variables. Now we're going to click environment variables down here and scroll down to path if it's not at the top. Here it is. So I'm going to double click this one and you're going to get a window like this with a bunch of things that you can change. Now we don't want to change anything. We just want to add a new one. So we're going to click new. We're going to type in C drive backslash bin. And uh, that's the path that we're going to use. Of course, you can use any path you want. This is usually how I set mine up. As you can see, it's already here. So I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to delete that and press OK, press OK, press OK. Now, assuming that you have um, done that, you can copy these files. I just copied them. Now I'm going to go to my computer, C drive, bin. This is where I just put all my binaries. And there's a bunch of stuff in here. But uh, I could paste all of these, including the folders uh, from the Odin uh, zip file there. So we want to paste all that in here. And it's going to take a while to copy. I'm actually just going to cancel it because I've already got it uh, in there. And once it's in here, it's going to be accessible on the path. Now, how do we check that? Well, we've got to open a terminal. So I'm going to open Windows Terminal here. You want to open a new one because the if it was already open, the path doesn't get updated dynamically while it's open. And for some reason, that didn't open. So let me just click that again. Very nice. OK, I'm going to press that uh, hotkey instead. OK, so the mouse doesn't work, but pressing Windows 1 did work. So Windows 11 is great so far. Anyway. So now we can see if we type in Odin, we've got our command. It found the exe. And you can see we've got a bunch of commands we could run. So Odin space something. In our case, we're going to use run. Uh, but we could also write Odin help run. And it would give us all of the uh, parameters that are available and also a description of what it does. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set up project. So usually, uh, and well, not usually, but in a lot of cases, using Visual Studio, you've got to like go into these menus and uh, tick boxes and do all that kind of stuff. We don't have to do anything like that. So let me just show you how easy this is. So we're going to make a directory called Odin Game Dev Setup. I think I already made it actually. So we're going to go into this directory, and I'm going to open Explorer here. So just in case you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, you can make directories in the terminal by typing mkdir, and you can go into that directory or folder by typing CD. And now we're going to make a new folder here. I'm going to just do it in here. 
We're going to make a source directory. So as you can see, the folder appeared. Now I'm going to use my editor, which is Helix, and I'm going to open source main.odin. And I usually use Helix, but you can of course use Visual Studio or uh, VS Code, Emacs, whatever it is that you use. Now here we've got our main Odin file. The thing that a Odin file needs first is it needs a package. So we're going to say package main. The convention is that all of your Odin files for a project are going to be in the same directory. So that would be our source directory. And the package, is, the package has to be the same. So the convention is to just call it main. And then we're going to create our main function, which in Odin is called a procedure. So we've got this proc keyword to denote that this is a function. Main is the name. And then we've got no parameters and we've got some braces. So inside here, we're going to print hello YouTube. And I'm going to import a package from the core library, which I'm going to go into in a second. And that's going to import this format um, format package, which we can then use to print this line to the terminal. So if I quit this and I type Odin run source, so it's going to run the source directory and it's going to find the main procedure and then run that. And here we go. It's compiled and it's run. That's it. That's all we have to do. Now, before we get into uh, the rest, I just want to show you a little bit about the Odin uh, packages here. So we've got Odin packages, as a core library, which is what you might think of as the standard library in C or C++. And then we've got the vendor library. This is the important one for today. Well, they're both important, but this is the interesting one for us right now. In the vendor library, there's a bunch of third-party things, including SDL, Raylib, OpenGL, DirectX, Lua, MicroUI, Mini Audio, a lot of libraries that are really useful for game development. And they, they come installed with Odin. So if we go back to our code here, and we go, and we open up, that's not opening, we open up the file here, and we import from vendor, well, what can we import? Raylib. Okay, let's import Raylib. Now I'm going to name it something, so I'm going to put a little RL here to name it RL, so we can refer to the Raylib procedures. I'm just going to make a really quick Raylib program here, so we're going to do init window, 800 by 600, the standard classic. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, Raylib was here. And we're going to use a an Odin feature here called defer. And we're going to use close window, except with a small i. And defer is going to make this line get called at the end of this scope. So at the end of the main procedure, it's going to close the window. That's what we want. Now, to actually see the window, well, we, we could run this, I suppose. So let's just run it, see what happens. As you can see, well, maybe you can't, depending on the frame rate. There was a window that opened and then it closed instantly. So that's not really great. What we want to do here is we want to use a while loop. So while something, and then we want to run our, our main game code in here. So in most languages, it would look something like this. However, Odin doesn't have a while keyword. Instead, you would use the for keyword. And Odin also doesn't require parentheses around um, the conditions of a loop. So we can actually just get rid of that. And we're going to say, while the Raylib window should not close. So we're going to invert that with the exclamation point. The window should not close. We're going to begin drawing, which is what we need to do at the beginning of a Raylib drawing loop. Then we're going to end drawing down the bottom here. And we're going to clear the background color to black. So that's going to make sure that whatever was in the window is going to get cleared at the start of every frame. So we don't have weird ghosting issues. And we're going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to write this code first, and then we're going to have a look at something else for a second. So I'm just going to write this and then we'll explain it. So let's run this, have a look. And I actually made a typo there. My bad. Draw a rectangle V. There it is. So how quick was that? That was really quick. That was not hours of setting up anything. That was minutes. That's pretty awesome. Now, of course, uh, there's nothing moving. So let's just add some movement real quick. So we're going to add a position. It's going to be a Raylib vector 2. We're going to just 
set the position to 2020 and we're going to set the size to if I can type 100 100 and we're going to set this position and size here actually we don't need to change the size so we could just leave it but I feel I need to explain something so right then I had 20 and 100 but these parameter types here they're vectors and a vector two so that it actually takes two numbers but in Odin if you supply a vector which is actually aliased as an array of two floating point numbers if you supply that with one number so for example this is a vector two right pause if I set pause equals uh, 30 it's going to set both the x component and the y component to 30. So I think that's important to know as to why that code was running. So if we have a look at this, we can set the size. We'll just leave it as 100. And then we're going to change the position based on the input here. So we're going to grab some input. I'm going to say if raylib is key down, we're going to grab left. We're going to do something. What are we going to do? pause.x minus equals speed. I'm going to make a speed variable here. This is going to be an untyped floating point number, which means if you add this speed variable, now because it's a constant, this is a compile time constant. That's what these two dots here mean. And that's why I put it in a capital, not two dots, uh, two columns. That's why I put it in, in capital. So this is a constant note at compile time. And the cool thing is, if you, let's say, add this speed variable to a 64-bit float, then it'll conform to a 64-bit float, or it'll be transformed into one uh, in that instance. And then same with 32 bits. So these are going to be 32 bits. Um, but we don't have to specify the type. So we've got left, right, up, we've got down. Something we've got to remember about uh, Raylib is that we go from the top left to the bottom right. That's how the coordinate system works. So what have we got here? If we're going to go up, we're going to go negative. If we're going to go down, we're going to go positive. Uh, and that's it. This should give us a moving rectangle when we use the arrow keys. Oh, I've lost it. Let me try moving the other way first. There it is. Fantastic. Okay, it's moving pretty fast, but uh, yeah, it's totally working. So we've got an interactive game in just a few lines of code in just a couple of minutes. Now, before we hop off, there is actually something I want to mention, which is the language server. So you might've noticed while I was editing there, I had language server pop-ups. I had autocomplete, I had descriptions coming up. We've got type information, all that kind of stuff. That is not included with the language. That is actually maintained generously by Daniel Gavin and 76 other contributors on this uh, project here called OLS. Now, if you use VS Code, like I'm sure most people do, I believe this package um, can be installed, Odin language, or plugin rather. So if you install this, you should get language support. Uh, otherwise, you can follow the instructions here. It's pretty simple. Uh, you download it, unzip it, run build.bat, and then if you want the formatter as well, run Odin format.bat. Um, and then you copy the exes into your path, which is what I showed you just before. We just explored Raylib, but it also comes with SDL2, SDL3, OpenGL, DirectX, whatever you want, really. And the cool thing is all that stuff just works out of the box. Now, if you want 10 more reasons why I recommend Raylib, check out this video here. Until next time, stay curious and build.